पालो टू फायरवाल इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन नंबर वन हाउ वेब एप्लीकेशन फायर वॉल्स आर डिफरेंट दैन नेक्स्ट जनरेशन फायर वॉल्स सो आई विल कंपेयर एफ फाइव बिग आई पी एस एम एप्लीकेशन सिक्योरिटी मैनेजर विथ पालो अल्टो फायर वॉल राइट because palo alto firewall is a next generation firewall and f5 big ipsm or application security manager is a web application firewall right so we will do comparison between both web application firewall and next generation firewall our uh, next question here is like why do some session so a session id 0 or what is the traffic log show application as incomplete or insufficient data so if you uh, look at the traffic log here and here like session id 0 even sometimes like we uh, find like a session id here and uh, after session id if we uh, look at the uh, packets here bytes received and sent there also we find like packets like exchange between client and server and then after drop action drop right that is something a bit confusing right after like uh, uh, packets exchange session id allocation packets drop but why right so uh, i'm going to explain that also and uh, also like we will understand the application column here like not applicable and sometimes like we see here incomplete right incomplete spelling mistake here right so application you can see here incomplete so i'm going to explain that like uh, incomplete and not applicable right our uh, next question here is super super important what are reasons that firewall drops a packet without showing anything in the traffic logs right package drop but you don't find you don't see anything in the traffic log so what could be the possible reason or reasons in fact so in order to answer or in order to find out answer of this question you should be knowing flow logic of palo alto firewall right starting from like ingress stage right and then to like your ip defragmentation zone protection tcp state check forwarding lookup or routing lookup nat lookup user id dash protection security policy like i mean like complete flow logic right so if we understand the flow logic and also we know like some debug commands or maybe packet capture so really that would be helpful to answer this question and also uh, like doing troubleshooting in production environment so because my objective is not just to uh, you know like just discuss question and answer here my objective is like uh, to explain like the problem to explain the question right practically in fact so that you can use your knowledge a skill in real life troubleshooting right so i'll be uh, simulating this problem in the lab environment and i will also show you troubleshooting how you can like find out like where is the problem because once like you have isolated the issue you have find out the reason so troubleshooting would become really very very simple so it's all about you know like uh, finding out the problem reason because if traffic is dropped then why we don't see anything like in the traffic log 
that's something really very very important then about h1 h2 and again a zone protection profile very very important in fact uh, first like knowing like what is blocked if zone protection kicks in and with the zone protection profile our policy is checked before security policy or after security policy right really uh, knowing answer of this is very very important and uh, apart from this zone protection profile there is also DAS protection profile in Palo Alto firewall so which is checked first like DAS protection profile or zone protection profile right so I'll answer that in a flow logic section and then again like explain virtual router and virtual system so virtual systems uh, yes can be easily understood uh, but um, uh, virtual router sometimes you know like be becomes a bit uh, difficult not exactly difficult I mean like uh, confusing in fact mainly for those who are coming uh, not coming from networking side network background not like uh, knowing OVRF and other similar type of concept right because virtual system is like something firewall virtualization virtual router is routing cable virtualization right and they both are completely different from each other routing table virtualization and firewall virtualization so i will try to um, simplify the whole concept i mean like virtual router and virtual system next one is acc and again very very important interpret vpn error messages right and not only interpretation also solution resolution to the problem right again very very important and there are a lot of messages here like phase one negotiation failed maybe like phase one negotiation is failed as initiator main mode sa what is sa spi esp phase one phase two right and um, pfs and uh, maybe like issue with uh, data plane i mean like uh, both tunnels are up phase one tunnel phase two tunnel both tunnels are up but data is not passing through there's no issue with the tunnel negotiation both tunnels like tunnel one tunnel two tunnel one as you know like uh, for the management plane or like control plane rather i would say like vpn gateways like they use tunnel one to exchange information but tunnel one is or tunnel two is basically data plane tunnel phase two tunnel i mean a pair of tunnel because phase two tunnel data plane tunnel is unidirectional so a pair of tunnels are created right in route based vpn and also understanding route based vpn uh, policy based vpn again very common most question from interview point of view so there can be a lot of questions a lot of questions based on vpn really very very important topic starting from like policy based vpn route based vpn right like why policy based vpn is a legacy way of configuring vpn why route based vpn is like the latest one the new one about uh, ike protocol phase one phase two negotiation unidirectional and bidirectional tunnels about spi security parameter index sequence number esp pfs and obviously troubleshooting troubleshooting mainly right what if like tunnel one is up but tunnel two tunnel number two means like data plane tunnel is down data plane tunnel is down or maybe both tunnels are up but users are unable to communicate with each other means issue with the data plane tunnel so how, how you will troubleshoot that problem in case if you find both tunnels up but there is no like data plane traffic just going back and through or maybe uh, encryption is there but no decryption encapsulation but do, no de-encapsulation right maybe sometimes like um, you get into some uh, routing issue in vpn so vpn troubleshooting really very very important so uh, there can be a lot of questions based on vpn 
and then again like understanding rpsec vpn ssl vpn uh, whether in global protect we can use both rpsec ssl client based client less split tunneling and a very very important a point like uh, in remote access vpn global protect vpn what is a split vpn how we can do troubleshooting of like uh, uh, like i uh, like in global protect or remote access vpn how we can connect collect logs right of a vpn client machine how that is collected how we can use that collected logs for doing troubleshooting really very very important you need to know a lot in like uh, in, in the vpn right and then in it active discard state so well, like a lot of questions are there so let me start with the first one let's not waste the time right so first question next generation firewall so gartner defines it as a deep packet inspection firewall that moves beyond port slash protocol inspection means different than the legacy or traditional firewalls right so obviously next generation firewalls are better than legacy firewalls because legacy firewalls means ip and port based firewall legacy firewalls generally look at layer 3 header and layer 4 header to control traffic so traffic is controlled based on layer 3 information like source ip destination ip protocol number and layer 4 like destination port address or maybe flag right in case of tcp so legacy or traditional firewalls are basically port and protocol based or ip based firewalls right means no screening ever no screening ever layer 4 of osi model okay no deep packet inspection but on the other hand and that is why a lot of evasive tactics evasive tactics like port hoping protocol hoping Or uh, tunneling inside another protocol, or maybe tunneling inside SSL or SSH. There are different evasive tactics, and that can be used to bypass traditional or legacy firewalls. But next generation firewalls are very different because next generation firewalls like are like obviously they also uh, first check the layer three ad address layer 4 like tcp or udp right but also they perform application label inspection right dpi deep packet inspection so next generation firewalls means like layer 3 layer 4 and then deep packet inspection right because next generation firewall means like application intelligence so like they they generally uh, have like uh, 4000 5000 6000 application signature database right to identify applications and not only application identification even intrusion prevention ips may be a software blade like in checkpoint we have a separate software blade ips in palo alto firewall also there are a lot of security profiles right not exactly ips but very similar to that one multi protection profile so by using this uh, protection profile protection profile even we can protect from cross site scripting sql code injection attack and a lot of other attack types right so next generation firewall what they can do uses signatures and analysis to identify applications means there is application identification mechanism in palo alto we use the term app id in checkpoint there is 
application intelligence software blade right so and the next one is pass to security using whitelist application so we can create security policy to allow a certain like maybe set of applications uh, maybe application based on their risk labels category right uh, uses signatures for IPS because like it's not uh, only for Palo Alto in fact for any next generation firewall whether checkpoint Palo Alto 14 Cisco FTDs also uh, next generation firewalls identifies malware via file sandboxing in Palo Alto, we use the term wildfire or zero day threat protection, right? Protecting from new attack type. And the next generation features include app ID, content ID, user ID. Also, like there is anti virus security profile, anti spyware, vulnerability, URL filtering. And obviously, common layer three and layer four ACS because even next generation firewalls, uh, what they do for initial three exchanges, three packet exchanges, and I'm talking about TCP based applications, right? TCP based applications. Even next generation firewalls, they control traffic based on IP and ports for initial three exchanges. Three exchanges, what do I mean by three uh, exchanges? means three way handshake first packet tcp sin and then sin act third act so like for initial three messages or packets next generation firewalls even they very much work as like legacy or traditional firewalls right but once three way handshake is successfully established done and firewall gets the first packet right with the data because initial three messages means what ip header and tcp header and i'm talking about tcp based application right because udp means what no three-way handshake connection less transport protocol not connection oriented so UDP based applications means the very first packet would have data. But the same is not true for TCP based application. I mean, if there is a Palo Alto firewall in the middle of communication stream, client and server, here is the client server. I'm taking example of any TCP based application. Right? Maybe, let, let me take one example here. Let's say uh, Palo Alto Firewall has a security policy to allow Google Base, right? And Gmail, Facebook, only these three applications allowed are permitted with security policy. What happens if an internal user, internal user tries to open YouTube, right? So first, youtube.com the domain name will get resolved to ip address either by using any internal dns server or maybe external dns server right both possibilities are there internal or external and once domain name is successfully resolved to ip address then three way handshake right so the first packet here tcp sin packet and the first packet means IP header and TCP header. No data, no data. So Palo Alto Firewall will look at the layer three header, like IP header, layer four, that is TCP header. And if like Google based, Gmail, Facebook, they all are allowed and they all are HTTPS based applications, means TCP port 443, YouTube use also port 443. So benefit of doubt is given to the traffic and definitely Palo Alto Firewall would allow this TCP SYN message, SYN packet to pass through. It means initial security policy is applied on the basis of IP address 
and port address very much as legacy or traditional firewall do like uh, control the traffic agreed right and once tcp 3 by handshake is successfully done and in the fourth packet fourth message fourth packet hits palo alto firewall and in case of https basically even after three by handshake three messages three tcp messages what happens then ssl handshake right ssl messages are exchanged so the fourth packet here after three way exchange fourth one will be ssl client hello packet and this the very first packet i mean like the fourth packet basically technically fourth packet would have like a lot of information supported ssl tls version cipher suite also session id sni like the domain name here will be mentioned youtube.com right and some other session specific data now palo alto firewall will do like investigation will find like the name in sni field of this first uh, the next packet and now palo alto firewall will check the security rule or policy do i have to allow you to no means dropped fourth packet right fourth one even in case of http based like application again fourth packet in case of http the fourth packet means after three way handshake the fourth packet will be what ip header tcp and http right data here so palo alto firewall will look deeper inside it will find the host name like there mention inside this http data host name may be example.com will check the security policy not allowed then dropped and that is why sometimes what we find in traffic log a session id number right allocated even like messages exchange back and forth between client and server and then dropped and most likely because of this reason because initial three messages were allowed right on the basis of ip and port and then the fourth packet once like application is identified then dropped but till that time session already established session id allocated messages exchange and that is why sometimes like we uh, find like th this kind of log also in palo alto firewall or any firewall and I, i'm going to show you that particularly so uh, no problem I, I will explain it further right so uh, you, you understand like in next generation firewalls yes like layer 3 4 acs antivirus spyware vulnerability next gen features malware like uh, maybe protection from zero day attack ips kind of stuff right so what palo alto firewall or checkpoint firewall or ftd or 14 8 or any next generation firewall can't do right so does not protect layer 7 web applications cannot protect against the wasp top 10 open web application security project top 10 maybe three or four wasp like uh, maybe uh, security threats protected uh, by next generation firewall but not all like top 10 in fact maybe four five three or six uh, simple injection attacks slip by the fences cross-site scripting parameters forceful browsing attacks are not detected and no problematic functionality if particularly i talk about f5 so in f5 we have like i rule or tcl script in fact so as such like we don't have anything similar to that in any next generation firewall and i'm going to show you that also so just let me go through the concept first and then i'm going to quickly show you what are different options protect against wasp top 10 and if you want to know more about wasp top 10 so you can go to the location wasp.org top 10 so you'll find there like top 10 uh, web vulnerabilities or weaknesses 
right for example cross site scripting or sql code injection attack or session or maybe browser hijacking cookie tampering and many more protect layer seven applications without involving the development team so even in like a five big ip asm or waf yes like we can create a very strict policy to uh, protect uh, our applications and without involving application team server team or development team in fact and even there are two different ways to create policy pass to a negative security model i hope you understand pass to is like anything that doesn't match the definition of acceptable behavior is like not allowed means like denied a negative is something like bad elements are not permitted and then rest all permitted so that's something like past you and negative security model and uh, OWAFs or web application firewalls provide protection from parameter tampering forceful browsing cookie tampering brute force protection login page enforcement web scrapping cross site request for zero protection they are not pass they all are not possible with any next generation firewalls so even a lot of firewall companies what they uh, like uh, you know, claim uh, they, what they say even that our firewalls like next generation firewalls are to protect networks whereas web application firewall a purposefully a purposeful uh, purposefully built uh, uh, like application firewall is to protect web applications right a specialized firewall in some cases enterprises will need to implement both solutions for it true because next generation firewalls means to protect networks web application firewalls to protect web application let me quickly show you both uh, web application firewalls and as well as your web application firewalls so that you can better understand like differences between both because if we try to understand with respect to osi layers or osi model so maybe uh, uh, will be a bit difficult because they both can like uh, and they both operate up to layer 7 of osi model right they both means like next generation firewalls and as well as your palo alto let me start with palo alto firewall so in palo alto firewall obviously is a next generation firewall and here in palo alto firewall we i think is timed out so let me log in again here So in Palo Alto firewall, if uh, we look at the application, so Palo Alto firewall has like application signature database. In fact, of commonly used applications, and here you can see like approximately 4,000 applications, like from different categories, subcategory, even risk labels, right? So we can create very strict policy. Uh, we can uh, whitelist applications right we can do some static and dynamic grouping of application also if i just show you uh, security profiles so palo alto firewall has like uh, anti wire security profile anti spyware vulnerability protection url filtering file blocking sandboxing like wildfire and also data filtering total there are seven different security profiles so you can uh, put them in security policy i mean like uh, create from here like security profile and then associate with security policy so we can associate security profiles with security policy here that's why right so different options here like i mean uh, antivirus vulnerability and this, this, this. and uh, if i just show you this f5 big ip asm and security application security and look at the different options here allowed file types are disallowed urls disallowed and allowed parameter and in parameter itself like we can define parameter length values 
a lot of RAC signatures here also very similar to your uh, uh, IPS signatures and uh, session and logins even we can um, like also define what HTTP methods would be allowed by default head post get HTTP methods are allowed means if here like there is web application firewall and uh, behind web application firewall web application here so by default only these three HTTP methods are allowed means if a user is trying to use different method and method is like inside this HTTP header right so here you must have seen like get and then the version keep alive and then the host field right user isn't and a lot of other information so here in f5 big ip smr in any web application firewall we can create security policy to uh, allow or not to allow a specific http method even like the host field right whether host field is blank absent or uh, there is like fqdn or ip address right if we want that host name so distinctly contain name not the ip address yes that is possible here right even user isn't like if web application firewall finds so a specific user isn't then request should not be uh, treated as a legal request and illegal request means action if we said block then o will be blocked then here it means we can create here like an ASM, ASM policy to uh, like to inspect different entities, parameter, parameter length, meta character, right? Like that all present inside HTTP header. Even like uh, applying attack signature, yes, like it's also here. Even we can restrict what all file types should be allowed, what all file types should not be allowed even the uh, like parameter length and value already I mentioned that uh, a lot of like uh, brute force attack prevention cross site scripting uh, and data guard is very similar to your data leakage or DLP kind of stuff like data loss prevention geo location enforcement so and uh, if I just show you a bit here in learning and blocking settings so you, you can see here like uh, different options cookies and uh, evasion tech uh, technique and uh, let me expand here also file types like illegal file types then what actions would be taken some general settings here also over the HTTP protocol like is RFC compliance or not right whether like these multiple host headers bad host header value null in request bad http version right so a lot of stuff here and ip address geolocation redirection domains server technology we can also specify here and a lot of like uh, layer 7 uh, denial of service attack protection here bot defense right so we can control that like even good and bad bots in fact search engine bots obviously that should be allowed so it's very granular i mean like a web application firewall since purposefully designed or built a web application firewall mainly focusing uh, on like protecting a web application and so it has like a lot of features in fact so we can control like a or we can restrict traffic based on different entities of like HTTP header. Whereas on the other hand, next generation firewall, yes, like we have here like anti spyware, vulnerability production, antivirus, right? So obviously, vulnerability production is very similar to IPS or your attack signatures. So up to certain extent up to certain level next generation firewalls also provide like web security no doubt about that there is no question 
So I'm not saying like Palo Alto Firewall cannot protect applications from cross-site scripting attack or SQL code injection attack. No, Palo Alto Firewall can provide protection. There is no question about that. So not all was top 10, but some of them, yes, can be uh, protected. So if uh, like you, you, you can see uh, like vulnerability protection profile and here like you'll find uh, SQL code injection attack. Here like uh, it's a, a read only in fact, because this is the default one. So if I just show you here, SQL, then you, you can see like a lot of uh, CV like common vulnerability exposure 20213592. So it's a new one, 2021. It's not very old. Even remote code execution vulnerability, Oracle or my SQL. So even this Palo Alto firewall has like uh, almost 729 like based on SQL cross side scripting yes so we can protect uh, our backend applications from code injection attack from cross side scripting attack by using vulnerability protection profile with the security policy but still we cannot control like what all http methods should be allowed and uh, uh, parameter parameter length their values meta characters and um, and different entities of like http header right so i hope you understand like they both are completely different uh, from each other right so moving on from here and um, let me uh, talk about like the next one why do some session or session uh, show a session id zero so 